Mysteries in the West. 2. The Chivalric Circle. When you are still fragmentated, lacking certainty, what difference does it make what your decisions are? Hakim Sanai, The Walled Garden of Truth. A group of Sufis is formulating an association which shall enable them to carry on their work of human development towards self-fulfillment. The work, as with all Sufic activities, has three parts. The individual himself must live up to certain personal standards, and they choose the medieval ideal of chivalry as their format. This, in turn, gives them an opportunity of forming a visible elite. The existence and appearance of this elite fulfills the second function, the impact upon humanity in general. The third element, reverence for the teacher, is invested in the Sufic king figure, who leads the community. They choose, as an external form, the hooded woolen robe of blue, which is standard wear among Sufis. For colour symbolism, they adopt gold and blue, to signify the essence within the body or mind, the sun in the sky, or the speck of gold within the sea, as the Sufi sage Attar puts it. The basic unit of the Sufi is the circle, the halqa. In their commemorative rituals, they carry out the exercises or movements collectively known as the dance. As their slogan, they take an Arabic motto about a cupbearer. This is translated in the Persian branches in a rhyming sentence with almost the same sounds as the motto of the Garter Order. Their patron saint is Khida, the Green One. The Halkas are composed of 13 people. There are two reasons for this number being used. In the first place, these Sufis wish to emphasize their inner teaching as being the same as that of all religions. It is the secret, concealed message of all faiths the need for organised development. In this case, the other religion with which these Muslim Sufis are most concerned is Christianity. The acceptance of the identity of Christianity and Islam is conveyed by simple numerology. Unity, the Sufis of the Hira order explained by their symbolism, is the same as three for practical purposes. They demonstrate this by pointing out that the Arabic word unity, ahad, the adjective used for Allah the One, is composed of three letters in Arabic, A-H-D. Therefore three is one, because the difference between monotheism and Christianity is one of terminology. But where does the thirteen come into the picture? Quite simply, in Arabic notation A equals one, H has the numerical value of 8, and D is equal to the number 4. Add these together, and the result is 13. 13 therefore becomes a number important to this Sufi group. Halkas of this persuasion are thus always grouped into 13. 13 men form one unit. The reputed date of the formation of this organization is about the year 1200 of the Christian era. About a century and a half later, nobody is quite sure of the date, a mysterious organization came into being in England. It was inspired by the king himself. The members were divided into two sections of 13 each, one under King Edward III, the other under the Black Prince. Its colours were blue and gold, its robes woollen and hooded, its aims overtly chivalric. Its patron saint was St George, who is equated in Syria, where his cult originates, with the mysterious Hida figure of the Sufis. It was, in fact, called the Order of St George, which would translate direct into Sufi phraseology as Tariqa i Hadrat i Hida the Order of St. Hida. It became known as the Order of the Garter. The word Garter in Arabic is the same as the word for the Sufi mystical tie or bond, 
and also religious or monkish asceticism. The word for the basic Sufi unit, halka, is interchangeable in Sufi parlance with the very same radical form from which gata is derived. The early records of the order of the gata are lost. Speculation as to the derivations and origins of the order have replaced them. The pretty story that the order was instituted as a result of someone sneering at a real gata, while discounted by some serious historians, may in fact have a very interesting basis in fact. It may be recalled that this incident is said to have taken place at a dance. If we look at the facts from the Sufi historical point of view, we can ask something which may not have occurred to others. What kind of dance was it? The whole incident looks like an attempt to explain away a dance ritual which was in some way interrupted and had to be justified. A garbled version is likely to have come down to us. Why, for instance, was a garter being displayed at a dance, if this is what was happening? Either because the garter was chosen to represent in visual form the tie of the order, or because some lady's garter had fallen off. What is the slogan of the Order of the Garter, and does it have any connection with the Hida Order? Superficially, there is no connection between Dishonoured be he who thinks evil of it, and the secret cup-bearer phrase. If we approach the matter from conventional method, we will never see the connection. But if we go by sound rather than meaning, for the time being, a strange fact emerges. The French version of the slogan and the Arabic and Persian ones sound almost like the same words. Those who have read even translations of Persian Sufi poets, with their cupbearers as the medium of enlightenment of the Sufi, will see the connection. The process by means of which a foreign word or phrase becomes adopted into another language is well established in literature and custom. There are numerous examples, and the system has even been named, being catalogued in dictionaries as Hobson Jobson. The interminable religious chant in India, Ya Hassan Ya Hussein, O Hassan O Hussein, is accepted in English under the sound Hobson Jobson, an attempt by British soldiers to reproduce the chant. The standard Indian dictionary of Anglo-Indian terms, containing many examples of the process, is actually called Hobson Jobson. In West Africa, the Arabic word al a bagpipe, has been anglicised into alligator. Near a home, all Londoners are familiar with the name of a certain tavern, the Elephant and Castle, originally named the Infanta de Castilla. Quite recently, a Middle Eastern friend of mine presented an astonished barrow-pushing scrap collector with a shilling in a London street. The man had been repeating, with fervour, in that plaintive tone of the hawker, Any old iron? The way in which he drew out the sounds was, for my friend, indistinguishable from the mendicant dervish cry of, O oh, Imam Reza! which shouting dervishes repeat hundreds of times a day as a pious invocation, heard by all in some areas. Shakespeare's name is sometimes rendered in perfectly correct and acceptable Persian as Sheikh Pir, the ancient sage. A society with secret phrases, or which had to suffer an interruption during a ritual, would have need to explain what a barbarous phrase meant and what exactly was the basis for elevating a garter? There is a great deal of other material which links these two movements, much of it initiatory in character, and which cannot be reproduced here. It may be said, however, that an alternative name for a branch of the Hida order is El Mudawira, the round building, associated with the great palace of Baghdad, which belonged to Harun al Rashid. The entire city of Baghdad was constructed in 762 AD in certain geometrical proportions based on the wheel. Traditional Sufi groups, like the Freemasons of the West, 
associate their dedication with this round building. It may only be a coincidence that the Garter Order was concerned with the Round Table Revival, and that King Philip of Valois was also anxious to start a new Round Table group. Until the time of Edward VI, died 1553, the order was called that of St George, patron saint of England, although the traditional connection with a garter reaches back to the origins of the order. It is just possible that 200 years after its first institution, the meaning of the word garter was sufficiently well understood for this to become the actual name of the order. Successive alterations to the ritual and numbers of the knights have virtually changed the originally Sufic coincidence. Today, the Order of the Garter is still the most important and proudest institution of England. The idea that it may be of foreign derivation is unwelcome to some people. These, however, are only those who fail to realise that, whatever its origins, it is in England that the Order has attained its greatest distinction, worthily maintaining an honourable role of elite. Those who have sought in the Garter a connection with the strange tradition of the witches may not be as wide off the mark as others might think. At least one branch of this fragmentary cult in Britain is heavily influenced by the Spanish Saracen transmission of a deteriorated Sufi type, where a vague magical power idea has replaced the theme of Baraka. There is a very coherent reason for the Sufi group combining the elements of blue, gold, kingship, Hida, or St. George, and the protection of women into their formulation. It is all based upon a single word root and its manipulation, though a similar consistency cannot be found in the order of the Gata. This might lead one to suppose that the Gata is a translation of the essential qualities of the Hida group all of which can be found assembled in the triliteral root KHDR. The elements used in the format and rituals of the group are all found here. Khadir, to be green, Islam, the matrix of the group. Khudir la fihi, he was blessed in it, the benediction of the group. Khida, Khidir, St. George, Elias, the patron of the Sufis, Khida. El Khudrat, the sea, the ocean of life in which the Sufi finds truth, the sea of which the Sufi is a wave much used in poetry, the blue in which is the gold. Akhda, suspicious, fine woman, chivalry, referring to the first Islamic order of chivalry, when Muhammad early in the 7th century founded a body of men to protect women and caravans. Khadra, the chief of a tribe. El Khadra, the sky, firmament, from which the sun breaks through, another allusion to the gold in the blue. El Khadir, gold, meat and wine. The gold element of the sky or sea. The meat and wine which are common denominators with Christian ritual. The Christian ritual itself is regarded as symbolical of the totality of the whole community and individual development, so that the sacraments of the Church are to the Sufi merely a fragment of the whole undertaking as given above. The emblem of the group is the palm tree, which is derived from the root khada, to cut a palm tree. The tree itself, as noted elsewhere in this book, signifies baraka, and other basic elements of Sufism, emblazoned upon the cryptic Hohenstaufen coronation robe of the kings of Sicily and the Holy Roman Emperor, who were known to have Sufi contacts. The time of Edward III in England certainly did see an extension of Saracenic elements into Europe. English national dancing, the Morris, must be of these origins. Cecil Sharp, the authority on English folk dance, has linked European Moorish dancing and the probable date of its entry into England. The Morris, then, once also the Moresque of England, Le Morisque and Morisco of France, 
the Moresca of Corsica, is in all reasonable probability Moorish in origin, never mind if in our own country it has become as English as fisticuffs. Holland, as is told by Engel, was infected too. Industrious research, in fact, will probably show that the Morris, in some shape or other, was known throughout Europe and beyond. As for the date of its introduction into England, that is impossible to state with certainty, but most authorities point to the time of Edward III. Maybe when John of Gaunt returned from Spain is probably the earliest when Morris men were seen in England. C.J. Sharp and H.C. McElwain, The Morris Book, London, 1907, page 15. These dances may have been imported direct from Moorish Spain in those times, but they are traceable to Sufi fraternities much further back in time. The riding of a hobby horse, Basque Zamel Zayn, from Arabic Zamel El Zayn, Gala Limping Horse, is only a part of Sufic ritual. Legacy of Islam, edited Arnold and Guillaume, Oxford, page 372. These entertainers are not only certainly reminiscent of Arab minstrels, they are representative of the humorous poets in gaudy dress, long hair and painted faces, who act out certain metaphysical teachings to this day among the Sufis. Sometimes they rode hobby horses, sometimes canes, feigning idiocy as fools of God. One such dervish stick rider character is interviewed by Rumi in his Mathnavi. This is a connection with the BRSH, Bruja, Witch Riders of Spain. The first Sufi record of a teaching journey to England, such as contained in the travels of Najmuddin, Star of Faith, Gwath ed Daha Kalandar. He was born about 1232 or perhaps earlier. His son, or another successor, Najmuddin Baba, followed his father's footsteps from India to England and China in 1338. The first Najmuddin was a disciple of the illustrious Nizamuddin Aulia of Delhi, who sent him to Rum, Turkey to study under Hida Rumi. Hida Rumi's full name was Syed Khida Rumi Kapridari, the cup-bearer of Turkestan. It will be remembered that the Hida order, equated with the Gata, has as its slogan a salutation to the cup-bearer. This cup had miraculous qualities. Legend has it that this dervish carried with him the interpretation of the Sufi sign Hu, which in stylized calligraphy looks like the number four, the mason's mark found on Gothic buildings in the West. In addition to its forming a framework for the Sufi magic square, it is also used by the calendars as a diagram of the three devotional positions, upright, kneeling and lying down, which may be equivalent to the instruments of the Masons. Najmuddin's teacher, Syed Khida, was an associate of the Sufi teacher Surawadi, of the Path of the Rose, sometimes equated with the Rosicrucians, of Abdul Qadir, Rose of Baghdad, and the father of Jalaluddin Rumi, some of whose stories are found in Chaucer, and who was writing at the time of the alleged journey to England as well as other very important Sufi teachers like Fariduddin Shagaganj and Shah Madar. Shah Madar taught the essential unity of all religions, especially the esoteric way of Islam and Christianity. He followed the teachings of Tefuri and the formulation of the king or lord of the fish, Dulnun the Egyptian or the black. Fariduddin Shagaganj, Father Farid of the Sweet Treasure, was of the Chishti school of Sufis, and was originally a nobleman of Afghanistan. He died in India in 1265, where his tomb is revered by people of all faiths. His functions were healing and music. The Chishti musicians, who wandered through Asia with fife and drum, assembling the populace and telling stories of Sufi meaning, may be connected with the Spanish Chistu, or Jester, whose costume was strikingly similar. 
The Sufi wanderers called Kalandars and Chishtis must have brought to the West other dances, as well as rhythmic ritualistic procedures, and those which are in part represented by the Morris man. Hugo of Reutlingen, as an instance, in his Wealth Chronic of 1349, quoted by Dr. Nettle, speaks of the song in F major used by dancing bands which reminds us of the Arabian dance of the dervishes. Paul Nettle, The Story of Dance Music, New York, 1947, page 49.